former president to Thabo Mbeki's presidency, set the course of state capture. This is according to author of Thabo Mbeki, The Dream Deferred, who believes his presidency's policies and practices allowed state capture to take its course. In the book, Gavissa says that former president Jacob Zuma was a deputy in Mbeki's administration despite obvious evidence of his incompetence. Mark Gavissa joins me now. Mark, very good morning. Thanks so much for speaking to us. This is an updated edition of uh, an autobiography that you already uh, did. Can you talk to us about what's new in this uh, biography? So the, the, bi the biography was, was published in 2007 at the moment that Mbeki was battling uh, Jacob Zuma for the presidency of the party, just before Polo Kwame. And the original biography, most of which is still there, is, is, is really um, the story of Thabo Mbeki's life and the life of his family, the Mbeki family, his father Gavin, their, their, their roots in the Eastern Cape, etc. What I've done in this updated edition, which has just been published, is I have looked at what the legacy of his presidency is, and I've also looked at what he's been doing um, since he left office in 2008, because it, he has this strange presence in our lives, um, Hugo. I don't know if you'd agree. I mean, he, there's, he almost has a spectral, ghost-like presence. Oh. He's there, but not there. And, and that's a kind of, that's a sort of post-presidential way of being. But, but I think that the spectral presence is, is, is because, um, because so many of us need him to be either good or bad. You know, we either look back at him with, 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 with great nostalgia um, for, for when things worked, when there wasn't state capture, and when we were governed by ideas like the African Renaissance, or we look back at him as, as this really evil man who, um, who, who was responsible for an AIDS genocide and, and, and brought a really corrosive uh, racial politics to South Africa and, and was aloof and distant. And, 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 and we all seem to be attached to these two to one or other of these versions of Mbeki. And what I wanted to do in my new writing was firstly understand why that is, and secondly, like, really look at what he's been doing and, and what his legacy is. Well, before we talk about what he's been doing, let's talk a little about the fact that you seem to suggest that he was complicit uh, in that state capture. What is your thinking behind that? So I, I'm not so sure if I would go so far as to say he's complicit in state capture. The, the phrase I use is that he, he laid the table for state capture. So there's never been any accusation uh, or any evidence that Thabo Mbeki has corrupt himself. And Sorry, certainly may, we did may not I come in before, before yes. you complete answering that question? Uh, there is a suggestion then uh, that if he, if he laid the table, did he do it knowingly or not? That is a very interesting question, and I'm not quite sure I have the answer for that. Um, uh, what Mbeki did was, and what the Mbeki government did was, was put into place a whole lot of systems of, of patronage, um, a lot of which came from black economic empowerment, which in and of itself is not, is not necessarily something that causes corruption. Let's be clear about that. BEE is, has been a, a, a really powerful transformative tool in this country. But, but as Tabo Mbeki's brother Moletsi put it to me, as soon as you have a system uh, where you advance because of who you know rather than what you know, it's ripe for abuse. And that system was used to fund the ANC. And, and, and I would argue that in that, in that instance alone, Mbeki knew what he was doing. He knew that... Um, that the people um, who were being promoted uh, in the private sector and in uh, the state-owned enterprises, that part of the deal was is that they were going to make sure that the ANC's own bank balance remained stable. And, and we, we, see this, we see evidence of this in, in, in the Oilgate scandal during his time. We, we see it in, 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 in all the information that's in the public domain about Chancellor House, which was this... Um, this, this investment vehicle is this investment vehicle of the ANC. And Chancellor House um, uh, managed to get a deal to, to provide uh, boilers to the Medupi and Kusile power stations with Hitachi um, and, 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 and made millions and millions of rand. So the ANC got millions and millions of rand out of this contract for the boilers. Now, we all know what's happened at those power stations and how we live with the consequences. And really what that's a sign of is, is, is how the ANC kind of was not only thinking about what's good for the country, the ANC was thinking about what was good for its bank balance uh, because it had to remain afloat. And that was very much something that began in Mbeki's years. 
Well, it's difficult to imagine that they were thinking for the, the thinking of the good for the country when we certainly look at the challenges that we are facing around uh, around ESCOM. I'm going to quote here something that the former president said, and would certainly like to elicit your response. He says the ANC has been captured by a dominant faction, which is not ANC. He said that at a crisis meeting of veterans, you wake up in the morning and you see a report. Money that should have gone into the ANC has been stolen. That cannot be the ANC. Now, just how much responsibility should Tabambeki be taking for that? Well, you know, that's a very, it's a very, firstly, let's just say it is, I think, really important and valuable that Tabambeki, as a former president, has embarked on a crusade against corruption. And, and towards the regeneration of the ANC. I think his, his, his presence in public life, his reemergence uh, on, on this score is great. But, but when he says that cannot be the ANC, I mean, it, it's kind of a very convenient fiction because, because, because what, what he's really saying is, is that it is um, a dominant faction of outsiders who ejected me from the ANC. It wasn't the ANC who ejected me. And, and it doesn't take responsibility for the fact that it really was the ANC that brought us state capture and that many of the players had, had, had been put into place um, before the moment Mbeki was recalled in 2008. It's not like a line was suddenly crossed and we went from like good ANC to bad ANC in a minute. And there's a lot of continuity between the two governments. And there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a continuity of ideology, too. You know, Mbeki was interested in, in what we might call the political capture of the state by ANC cadres. And this was about um, making sure that people who were, who were loyal to the African National Congress were in every single corner of government. And, and this happened very quickly. Now, I argue that this political capture opened the doors for the institutional capture that happened under Zuma. The institutional capture was, was really that when, when once you were in place, you used these, um, particularly the state-owned enterprises, towards the end of your own personal game. Um, and, 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 and there is where I see the continuum. And I think it's, it's quite um, a, a, both idealistic and revisionist for Tabo Mbeki to say, this is not the ANC. Idealistic because it because it evokes a, an idealized struggle history and contaminated by abusive practices and waged by people with only noble intentions. And revisionist because it, it, it kind of exonerates uh, everybody who was in the Mbeki government from what happened afterwards. I find that quite interesting. Do we have a case of a runaway train? He set the table for what then became state capture not intentionally knowing that that is where he's going to go, and all of a sudden he's had an about turn, or is it a realization that uh, this little fall has uh, snowballed into, into an absolute avalanche? No, that's a very interesting question, Hugo. Um, one of the interesting things about Mbeki and about ANC leaders is that they have been talking about corruption from the very beginning as a big problem, as a problem they would have to deal with. And, and one of the things that Becky does now is when he speaks about corruption in the ANC, he always goes back to statements that Nelson Mandela made in you know, 1995, statements that, that Mbeki himself made in 98, 99, to say, we've always known that this is a problem. We've always seen that this is an issue. And it's true. You go back and look at the statements of the ANC, it's there. And, 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 and what, what I think Mbeki is doing when he, when he lists in his, in his recent speeches, this, this kind of catalog of all the comments that, that ANC leaders have, have made about corruption, I think he's, in a way, and as much as Mbeki is able to, he's, he's acknowledging um, some liability. He's saying, we failed. Uh, he's not going so far as to say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, this began on my watch. Uh, that's not really Mbeki's style. But I think he is acknowledging that... that um, that he failed, that he and his government failed going back all the way to 1994 to, to manage a situation which, which did, uh, as you say, uh, in the Zuma kleptocracy, become a runaway train. The question is, is whether, whether really it's any solution now to speak about regenerating the African National Congress. One of the things that's so interesting to me about Thabo Mbeki is, is that even though all his closest um, comrades left the ANC to form COPE once he was recalled. Mm. Mbeki stayed in the ANC. And Mbeki's now very much back in the bosom of the ANC. Um, he, he, he seems to be quite a, 
a significant advisor to Cyril Ramaphosa, despite their, um, their, their quite fractious history. And, and, and I think we need to understand that for, for people like Mbeki, the ANC is not just a political party, it's not just a vehicle for transformation, it's family. And, and, and that, I think, is, is, is a primary problem for someone like Thabo Mbeki, is, is when you confuse um, a, 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 a modern political party which has, which has um, responsibilities for making a better life for all, as, um, as the ANC's slogan says, with, with a family that you are kind of atavistically um, connected to mm -hmm. and involved in and, and have some responsibility for as an elder of that family, I, I think that things can go off the rails, and I think that's what we've seen. Mark Avissa is the author of Tabo Mbeki, The Dream Deferred. We were having that conversation where he suggests that former President Tabo Mbeki may have laid the table for state capture. Thank you for your time this morning.